It seems like male detectives are everywhere in Canadian movies, as cops, as private eyes, as federal agents. But where were all the women? Surely there were some somewhere. There had to be films about female detectives too. Where could I possibly turn to find movies about women solving crimes? I'm a lifelong fan of women detectives, in books, on TV, in movies, in video games. And so when we began this project, I was really excited to learn more about women detectives in Canadian film. I thought I would have more movies than I could ever watch, since there are tons of Canadian crime novels and TV shows with female investigators. But I couldn't find any, and neither could my dogged research assistant, Jacob. We found lots of women in crime films as the girlfriend, the wife, the daughter, the victim, but as the detective, no. Nope. It's not just Canadian films. There aren't many Hollywood films with female detectives either, especially when we compare them to films with male detectives. Film scholar Philippa Gates says this absence has incited debate amongst scholars whether the female detective is merely an impossible fantasy. One reason why is because of what the detective does, what the detective stands for. Things like order, authority, and expertise. Consider Sherlock Holmes, one of the most famous fictional detectives. And now, to be Holmesian means to rely on logic, reason, rationalism. These are traits traditionally and historically associated with masculinity. And so detectives have, traditionally and historically, more often been male. So much so that pop culture scholar Linda Mizjewski calls the female detective the wrong body in the expected place. Because Hollywood hasn't really made female detective films in the past, it might seem like a risky proposition to start doing so now. So those are some of the possible reasons why we don't see too many female detectives in films. Or to be more specific, why we don't see too many female detectives in theatrical films, films intended to be shown in a movie theater. But if we look beyond those, we can find a whole bunch of female detectives in the made-for-TV movie. In fact, we find a specific kind, the kind I call the chick detective. This chick detective combines elements from two different genres, chick texts, like chick flicks or chick lit, upbeat stories about friends, work, and dating told from a first-person female point of view. And then there's the detective part. They aren't official or trained detectives. However, they do stumble across some crime and set out to solve it. Exactly like it sounds, a movie intended to be shown on TV and only on TV. Canada makes tons of these movies, often as co-productions, collaborations with American studios. They're supported by various provincial and federal funding programs. They provide work for Canadian talent in front of and behind the camera. And they have a few notable networks happy to buy and broadcast them for domestic and international audiences. Well, if you're in the US, there's a whole channel of them, the Hallmark Movies and Mysteries channel. In Canada, those same films are scattered across different networks. Some are on W, some are on Lifetime. Because these are Canadian-made films, they are part of how Canadian networks meet their Canadian content quotas. The amount of homegrown productions the CRTC requires Canadian TV networks to air so that Canadian audiences can see Canadian-made media. Perhaps part of why we don't automatically think of made-for-TV movies as movies is because they're found only on TV. And perhaps part of why we don't talk about them very often is that made-for-TV movies have a reputation for being, well, a bit melodramatic and maybe a bit cheesy. Elaine Rapping tells us that all made-for-TV movies usually have three things in common. Personal narratives, raw emotion, 
and audience identification. These storytelling strategies can also impact how we, the audience, might think about crime and justice, because they shape how we encounter crime and justice in these films. Consider the first criteria, personal narratives. These are small town stories, and the chick detectives solve crimes because they want to protect the people and places that they love. The movies tell us this by introducing us to characters and their relationships right away. We meet our protagonist friends and family and find out what they're up to long before any crime solving occurs. This strategy gets us to focus on the chick detective's personal life, which is usually pretty good. She has a perky best friend, a job she loves, and a network of people to care about and who care about her in turn. Sometimes these films even use a voiceover so that we don't just see these things, we also get to hear them in the heroine's own words. This setup is important because it creates a sense of normalcy, of a good life that gets thrown into disarray when crime occurs. And it's thanks to these crimes that we get the second criteria, raw emotion. The crime usually involves someone close to the chick detective, which in a small town is pretty much everyone. These made-for-TV movies draw our attention to how this makes the characters feel by using a lot of close-ups. We also see these in the soap opera, where they serve the very specific purpose of suggesting that these feelings are the most important part of a scene. Feminist TV scholar Tanya Modleski explains that often only the audience is privileged to witness the characters' expressions, which are complex and intricately coded signifying triumph, bitterness, despair, confusion, the entire emotional register. These personal narratives and this raw emotion help achieve the third criteria, audience identification. The goal of these films is to have us, the audience, feel like we can connect to the chick detective, like maybe we can see parts of ourselves in her. Getting us invested in her success also means keeping us on this channel and even wanting to tune in again in the future. To do this, made-for-TV movies give us lots of clues that chick detectives are ordinary women. They aren't genius detectives like Sherlock Holmes, just everyday people that you might meet pretty much anywhere. They all have normal jobs like home renovation or librarian, and this gives them normal skills. They also have ordinary worries. They hope their friends and family will be happy and healthy. Many of them hope to meet the man of their dreams someday. By identifying with the chick detective, the audience may also agree with the things she cares about and the things she worries about. This helps us understand the impact and the importance of crime in these movies, because these chick detectives aren't dealing with supervillains. They're dealing with other ordinary people doing crummy things, like cheating on their spouses, like engaging in shady dealings to get ahead at work, like seeking revenge for an unkind word or action. Only by finding and putting a stop to this can the chick detective bring everything back to normal, which is all she really wants. The happy ending in these films is less about solving the crime and more about a hug and a kiss safely at home. So if we think about it, maybe that's one of the functions of crime in these mystery movies, to reinforce the normalcy and the ordinariness of the status quo, to suggest that people are happier if things are left unchanged. This conservative tendency is another common trait of made-for-TV movies, and is even reflected in the cast of characters. They're almost all white, wealthy, and heterosexual a distinct lack of diversity that even the head of the Hallmark Enterprise acknowledges needs to change. Made-for-TV movies are therefore more complicated than they may initially seem. They feature primarily rich, white, straight folks, the same perspective we find in all sorts of other mainstream media. They also feature women in the role of detective that has historically been dominated by men, they focus explicitly on women's friendships, workplace dynamics, and relationship concerns. As thoughtful media consumers, we can learn more by looking at this complexity, at how these different messages make their way to us, rather than simply saying these films are good or bad. And that is the case of the made-for-TV mystery movie.
Thank you.